Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm going to be checking out the Thermaltake Series 500 TG ARGB case in black. This case is also available in white or snow, as you see right here on the box. Thermaltake did send me this case, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. We have a sticker up here letting us know that we have 440 millimeter ARGB fans, black or white, as we already mentioned. And on the side, we have some additional tech specs for you right here about this particular case. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our warranty information, followed by a user guide and manual complete with tech specs going over everything you need to know about this case and your included accessories and screw sizes. Then we have helpful diagrams walking us through different sizes, depending on the parts and components that we're looking to install. Then we have some helpful diagrams about removing certain components and sides and panels, as well as how to install power supply, motherboard, hard drives. Then we have our GPU support bracket installation instructions, as well as how to vertically mount your GPU with a riser extender cable, air cooling, liquid cooling, AIO connection options, how to remove filters and our ARGB lighting instructions, depending on your motherboard manufacturer. Next, we have two bags of screws. So we have one kit right here, followed by a second kit with zip ties. We also have our little uh, speaker if you guys want to use that. We have that speaker included right there. And then we have our lovely GPU support bracket right here with thermal takes the logo and branding on it. That's gonna mount into the case. This will go right here. And then we can use a screw to adjust it. And all of those pieces are in this first kit for proper installation. Now let's go ahead, let's take a look at the case. First up on the case, you'll notice the showpiece right here. It's our tempered glass side panel window. We have a really nice unlocking mechanism right there to open it up to reveal the inside of your PC build for easy access. And the tempered glass gives us that nice display right here. You'll also notice on the side we have our power button and our IO, our front panel connection options. So we got some indicator lights, USB type C, USB 3.0 type A, mic, headphone jack, reset button, power button looks great. Now let's go ahead, let's take this door off and look at it with it removed. Now you'll be able to see the inside here with what we have to work with in regards to the build and the direction you wanna go. There's plenty of space for liquid cooling, air cooling, any AIOs you wanna mount, they have you covered. Nice grommets too to easily feed our cables through for some proper cable management. Nice 140 millimeter uh, ARGB exhaust fan right there. Triple fans on the front, we'll look at those in a minute standoffs, everything all set and ready to go for us in the front, plenty of room to build in. Now we're looking at the back side of the case right here with just a solid black back panel. You may notice down below it's split into two sections here where we have some additional venting for our power supply. We have three screws on the back to remove to be able to pull and slide this panel off. All right, the back panel has been removed. Take a look at how they've routed some cables already for our fans and our front panel connection options right here. We have two 3.5 inch hard drive trays and slots down here at the bottom. Plenty of room for our power supply to get that installed right there. Three thermal take, nice Velcro ties right there to keep everything managed. And we have multiple tie down points along all the different sides of this case. Our two grommets from the back view to fish stuff up and forward. We got room up at the top. So you can get creative with how you want to mount and run all your cables. Now we're looking at the very back side of the case right here with our 140 millimeter exhaust fan, motherboard IO slot right there, PCIe expansion slots. We have some additional venting up at the top and along the side and our power supply slot down at the bottom. On the front side of the case, you'll notice we have this beautiful grill showcasing our 340 millimeter ARGB fans with Thermal Takes branding down here at the bottom with a two-tone color scheme. This piece just goes ahead and you just press it out and you're able to easily remove it 
to reveal our three fans. I mean, look at that. I really like the front of this case. It's a nice showpiece and definitely a conversation starter. Now we're looking at the very top of the case. Again, it follows the same design and aesthetic of the front panel here with our mesh and plenty of room to install any sort of radiator if we wanna do an AIO, maybe some custom water cooling, or you want to add some additional fans or some air cooling, you have plenty of room up top. And there's two screws on the back side you have to remove to pull the cover off. So here's your view inside with the cover removed. Take a look at all that space. And if you're curious what the inside of the cover looks like, we have our removable filter to clean as needed. But there's a look at the top without the cover on. We can't forget about the very bottom of the case as well. So we got our four feet right here and we also have a removable filter. So you just gently pull and you can slide that out. If you wanna install or rearrange anything right here, you can. And the filter is easy to clean. And then just slide it right back on and you're all set and ready to go. Now it's time to build our PC. All right, so we got our PC built right here. Check it out. Everything is working great and it looks great. No prep work involved to build in this case besides popping off the panels that you need access to. So in our case, both sides and the top. And then after we installed everything, we went ahead and we added our GPU support. Again, this is optional. Our GPU actually came with its own bracket, but I wanted to use the thermal take one to get an idea for what this looks like if you wanna use this with your 3000 or 4000 series GPU. Those big boys will appreciate having that support. Your motherboard will thank you for it. Now let's look at this with the lights off. I mean, look at those colors. That's what's nice when you have 140 millimeter fans. You just have that much room, additional room to illuminate your RGB. They look really nice coming through the front panel and having the back one as well lit up being that larger 140 millimeter size adds a nice touch as well. All right, here's a close up of the build. Everything looks so nice. Let's start with the GPU. We're rocking an MSI 3070 Ti. And we'll give you that close up of the bracket. We can adjust this depending on the size of our GPU and you can space it all throughout here. Again, depending on the length. And that's adjustable up at the top. It's hard to see, but if you remove this, there's a little um, cutout that you can slide it with the screw back and forth. We're rocking some Lexar DDR4 RAM. Our motherboard's the MSI Z790 Edge Wi-Fi DDR4. We have a Cooler Master AIO, but I swapped out the fans for some thermal take fans. These ones are magnetic and they connect together. So cool. Really like how they look there. So the build came together really nicely in this case. Don't think I wouldn't show you the back. So in regards to cable management, what we did for this build is we just quickly put everything in the three thermal take straps in this main channel right here, but we didn't zip tie anything or really try to consolidate the cables to really tidy it up. So what's nice is we didn't spend that much time and I do feel like it actually presents a lot better than the amount of time we spent on it. But that being said, you have plenty of options to route this however you see fit. Down at the bottom, we do have a hub right here for our RGB from Thermaltake. This was not included. That's for the two fans I installed on the AIO. So I just tucked that right in there. That was just me doing a quick little speed build here. Everything else is coming out from the power supply down below, but ample room to really get creative and you could spend more time managing the cables than you would even building the PC. So now let's talk about this case and its performance. So first up, we have the PC at idle here with the front and the back panel removed. So many variables go into this test. What's your ambient air temperature? What are you using for your cooler, your CPU? So many variables, but with our particular build, this is what I'm showing right here in regards to temps. So we're looking at our CPU temps. Currently we're getting around Let's just say 26 to 31 degrees Celsius at idle, depending on the metric that you're measuring. So that's our current results. Then moving further down for our motherboard, our range is anywhere between, it looks like 26 degrees Celsius all the way up to 37 degrees Celsius. So again, right around, I'd say 30 degrees Celsius for both our CPU and our motherboard. In regards to our M.2 drive, we're showing a drive temp of 26 degrees Celsius. 
and our GPU is currently also at 26 degrees Celsius. Now let's put the panels on. So it's been over five minutes of having the PC idle here. I'm not seeing any differences in temps really, still ranging for the CPU, looks like 25 to 30. So that's what we were expecting and experiencing before with the panels off. Same with our motherboard, shown anywhere between, looks like 25 up to 36. Hard drive, 25 degrees, so technically got a little bit cooler, technically, by one degree Celsius. And our GPU is one degree Celsius less as well at 25. So no noticeable difference between having the panels on or off. Now let's stress it under load. All right, now we're stressing off the CPU at 100%. We're using Cinebench to do this. It's the 13900K. Again, you'll see completely different results with your cooler, your CPU choice, that sort of thing. But I wanna show you that at our max stressing right here, 90 degrees Celsius is what our core temp's at. It's fluctuating between 89 and 90. It did peak at 100. You'll notice our CPU package measurement and our core max is at 98 to 100 it just dropped down a smidge right there now it's back up to 100 degrees celsius as you can see but don't worry i know it's scary to see the red but that's well within range for this cpu and again that's at max load it's not like we just opened one chrome tab or anything like that we're really putting in the work stressing out the cpu and that's what you're seeing right there motherboard is matching that depending on the measurement that you're looking at anywhere between 31 up to 100 degrees celsius our drive is still the same at 25 degrees Celsius and our GPU is at 26. So for the most part, not much has changed between our drive and the GPU, but we are seeing an increase in temperature as you'd expect when we're stressing the CPU on the CPU itself and the motherboard. All right, now we're stressing the GPU. We have it under max load using Furmark to stress test it. Our temps went up, if you remember, from around 25, 26 degrees Celsius all the way to 66 degrees Celsius and we've held steady at that temperature. So we're not gonna get any hotter, any higher with this configuration, how we have everything set up, which is great because you wanna be under 80 degrees Celsius for max load. Now it's time for my favorite test. This is the smoke test where we take our smoke machine and we inject the smoke to the front panel. So you can see and get a nice visual of how the air is gonna move about in this case. So you'll see the smoke come in from our air intake. You might see some come up from the bottom through the GPU fans. Everything will hit right up here and either go out the radiator and those two exhaust fans or the exhaust fan out the back side. So watch what happens with the smoke. But look at that. Pulls it right in and right out. Just for fun, we'll do a little bit off to the side here. Maybe you can see how it pulls some of that air into the case. I always like seeing that. So those fans, they're really pulling that smoke. It's hard probably for you guys to see. It's really cool though. It's really pulling that smoke in. Let me move it a little bit. I'll do that again. Maybe you can see, but it's got a pretty wide pull. I mean, look at that. There, that'll be good. Look at that. Those 340 millimeter fans really creating a lot of suction and pull, bringing in all of that outside nice, hopefully cooler air than what's inside. So now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Series 500 case from Thermaltake. So they definitely have airflow and cooling in mind with this particular case. And I'm really pleased with the building experience, super consumer friendly with all the different configurations that they have available. They also prepped you really nicely for any sort of GPU installation. Very thoughtful to have that nice included support bracket and the ability to rotate if you wanted to do a vertical installation for your GPU, they have you covered. Now, what don't I like about this case? It's hard to nitpick anything in regards to the build experience or that just isn't my own opinion because the build quality is really nice. I like how it looks. You might not like it, so that could be something you could nitpick. But I would say with all the thought and care put into this case, it's interesting that they didn't include a riser cable since they clearly have vertical GPU mounting in mind. It would be cool to see maybe an option. I don't know how much that's gonna increase the price point and maybe that's the biggest hurdle there. But if they also went ahead and supplied a riser cable, that would be 
really nice. But other than that, not much else I can think of that I'd wanna see changed or I don't like about this particular case. So think about customization and airflow. That's gonna be why you buy this case as well as how it looks.